welcome to Revelation ACB. Good afternoon to you all. Welcome to Revelation 8 TV, where we blow the trumpet and sound the alarm. I am so happy and so grateful to be here today by the grace of the Lord. I thank you all for coming into this platform and joining us today. We have an amazing, great, great, great man of God, a speaker, a verse of the Lord um, that is right now in the UK, in London, and is coming from, from, from there to speak with us today. And I am excited. I'm just overexcited right now. I, I don't even know what to say. So let me go ahead and greet you in the name of the Lord before we get started here. And I also, before our guest speaker arrive, I also have a host here. This is the Revelation ATV host that's been hiding a very long time she's the kingdom host of the of the lord and and she will be here with us as well to introduce our speaker and this is carrie uh carrie olsen she'll be here in a moment but first let me go ahead and say hello to each and every one of you here that has been waiting patiently uh to to get started so apostle this right hand hello blessings to you woman of god i am happy that you are watching and we did play your video because she will have an amazing conference coming through on, on the month of april um april 12 and 13, which next Saturday she will be with us to tell, talk to you a little bit more about what's coming up in her event. Apostle, Apostle Harris, blessings to you. Bonjour. Ah, you speak French. Bonjour, bonjour. That tell me right now. I need to say hello to all my French speakers from Canada, from France, from wherever you are that you speak French. Uh, bonjour à vous tous. J'espère que vous allez très, très bien. Envoyez-moi un message. Comme ça, je peux vous dire bonjour. Uh, amen. Uh, so again, welcome to each and every one of you from the U.S., from the from uh, from Africa, from from everywhere that you are. Come on, we are about to get started very soon. I just want to say hello to each and every one of you here. Uh, Jennifer Lewis, thank you again for singing that song for us, a prophetic songs. I hope that you guys did listen to it, and um, please share and like the live. And at this time, um, again, if I don't say hi to you, A.G. Timothy, blessing woman of God, blessings. She was here with us last week. Amen. So um, at this time, I would like to go ahead and bring our host, um, um, Carrie Olson. She will be able to uh, 
Oui, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Comment ça va? Je suis Léona Lewis. Bonjour. Uh, J'espère que vous allez très bien rester avec nous, partager, aimer de, le uh, the live. Amen. So, again, uh, to each and every one of you, let me go ahead and bring our, um, our co-host for today, Carrie Olsen. What an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. I am a Christian business coach, and my ministry is to help other women package the gifts, the talents, the skills that God has given them into their very own signature coaching program to get it out in the world in a beautiful, God-honoring way that transforms other lives. But I am so excited because today I have the honor of introducing um, Prophet, Apostle, Reverend Moses Rankin. He is a leading UK and international apostolic and prophetic voice. He's the founder and general overseer of Sword of the Spirit International Prophetic Ministries with branches worldwide. An ordained licensed minister with accountability and a passionate lover of Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to have you here today. Moses Rankin, we would love to learn more about you and your ministry, and i um, just excited to be learning from you, to be in your presence. Um, yes, so at this time, we're going to go ahead and bring Apostle in. Um, Carrie, thank you very much for the great introductions. Um, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> hello everyone hello everyone hello 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 welcome thank you for being here oh what a pleasure thank you for the wonderful introductions wonderful to meet yourself kerry and uh to meet the woman of god uh, nostalia and uh, nostalia nostalia I, I was trying to practice how i say it <laughs> but it's an honor to be on this wonderful platform with you wonderful people i'm sorry i was a little bit held up because of traffic and um but i'm here i'm in um i'm actually in the uk but i'm not in london right now i'm in nottingham because we're ministering tonight so i'm here and i'm glad to be on this wonderful show amen thank you apostle so um um so uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself to us who you are and i know you say that you're in the uk but your ministry in the name of your ministry i believe carrie did say that earlier um and uh yes so i will leave you the platform to talk to us a little bit here okay wonderful well um uh, my name is moses ranking i'm an apostle slash prophet for the into the body of christ i'm the general overseer of sword of spirit ministries which is branches all over the uk i also am the the director bishop whatever you want to call it of seer's house apostolic prophetic network which license ordains and trains ministers of the gospel all around the world and um i've been in the faith for about i would say 33 years i've been in ministry for about 23 years and i've been full-time ministry for about 14 years so um um i've dedicated my whole life to jesus christ i love the lord and i've been i've been honored to be able to preach to many nations all around north america um places in africa caribbean europe and uh i i mainly kind of function a lot in the itinerant role right nowadays because um uh we, we go around planting and helping other churches strengthening churches around the world and um i'm just in love with jesus the same yesterday the same he's the same yesterday today and forever and when he appeared to my in my life when i was eight years old supernaturally a supernatural encounter with the lord radically transformed me so god came to me when i was young spoke into my life and um and showed me who he was and i never looked back i never looked back and i received my prophetic call very very early in my life when i was um eight years old and um i first preached when i was 11 um first and then um started ministry when i was 17 18 so you know i'm glad to be you know a, a servant of jesus i'm ultimately a servant of jesus i'm ultimately a lover of god and that's how i want to be known 
I just want to mention something. You was just in the event and you just got here. So right now you're in your hotel basically yes. after have preaching. So you just got here on uh, so that you can be with us on Revelation ATV. Yes, yes. I literally, I literally am in the hotel. I'm going to literally change and put on my clergy attire and get to the event. So 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 sorry if the background is a little bit funny. And also, also uh, my camera, I think on my iP my iPad, needs it's 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 created a natural blur. So <laughs> I'm sorry if the picture isn't the best. I did have my other camera, but it's it's I hadn't had time to take it out and whip it out. So I thought, you know, at least you can see me, you can hear me. So that's wonderful. Yes, it's blurring the right side. So it's blurring the right place. Uh, yes. So it's, it's, we can see you. So the, the rest of the of it, we don't need to see. So that's no. great. Um, I don't know. Uh, now, before, um, so at this time, I'll just go ahead and leave, the, leave you the platform here to share anything else that the Lord has provided. This man of God is a great prophet. I said, last night we got together and you just went straight into the spirit. What a great, great thing that someone that is able to see you, not in the flesh, but in the spirit of really who you are in the Lord. So today we'll be talking about Esther Arise. Yes, you know, and um, the, the, the story of Esther was um, she was a person that wasn't chosen in by man, but was chosen by God. And, you know, sometimes we've got to position ourselves to be chosen by God. When you're chosen by God, you're not the popular person, but the relevant person. And, you know, sometimes, or should I say relevant person. And being the relevant person means that, listen, you have an important part in God's plan. And you see, sometimes we've got to allow ourselves to be vessels or vehicles to be used as part of a plan. And sometimes you're not popular when you're part of a plan. You're not the I, you're not the one that everyone looks at and picks when you're part of the plan. The Bible says that uh, the stone the builders rejected became the chief of the corner. And sometimes, you know, people don't look at you and want to pick you, but you're the chief. People don't look at you and want to put you in place, but you're the one we need. And sometimes you so say, we've got to stop looking at how man reacts to us. And we've got to start positioning ourselves to say, God, I want your reaction. The Bible says that um, David understood something. He said, a broken and a contrite heart and no wise will you despise. Lord, when you deal with my heart, Lord, you love me. When you when when I allow my heart to be broken by you, Lord, you love me. And sometimes we gotta get ourselves back into the place when the reaction of the Father means more to us than the reaction of the people. Listen, when you get into ministry, you learn that you're only ministering for an audience of one. Sometimes God is saying to some, I feel like God is speaking to somebody right now. Some some of you have been so focused on the many, but God says focus on the one. You've been so focused on what people are saying, but God says, Listen, I am the one. I am your redeemer. I am your well, your way maker. I am your helper. I am your deliverer. I am your strong tower. I am the one that you need to look at. Praise God. And what I love about the story of Esther, Esther, Esther was a woman who understood her mission and her mandate was for the one. While people were looking for the crown, while people were looking for the throne, while people were looking to expand their own castle or their own kingdom, you had a woman called Esther who understood that I'm working for the one. I want my position to glorify God. Oh, come on, somebody. I want my beauty to glorify God. I want my words to glorify God. I want the throne for God. I want to stand next to the king for God. In fact, listen, I don't want it for myself. I don't don't want it for your applause. I don't want it for your clap, for your your your, your man, man's man's approval. I want it so I can use the position to to put my people in a favorable place. Oh, come on, somebody! Hallelujah! Sometimes we gotta learn how to be kingdom instead of building castles. Many people are building their castle, but God says build the kingdom. When your kingdom, you're putting everybody. Everybody goes up when you go up. When your kingdom, when you when you have that kind of mindset, everybody goes forward when you go forward. Amen. When your kingdom, we share all things in common. Esther says, listen, if I can get there, everybody gets there. If I can get in, everybody gets in. If I can be the voice for the Lord in the, in the, in the palace, if I can be the one chosen by the Lord in the palace, that means I can be the one that can transform the fortunes of my nation. Hallelujah. You see, the problem with our modern day Christianity is that we always want to get on the throne for ourselves. We always want to get 
get um, the place for us, to be in a position to get man's approval for ourselves. Sometimes we come into ministry the wrong way and we come into ministry on the back of failed life, on the back of failed situations or problems, insecurities or issues. And because of these issues that we have inside of us, the throne means something to us. The throne and the accolades mean something to us. But Esther was from the broken place. Esther was from the neglected place. Esther was from the rejected place. Esther, Esther was from a place where the only person who put me here was God. So when I get there, it has to be God. Come on, when I get there, I need to put God first. When I get there, God's agenda needs to be first. See, sometimes God says, I can't put you there because you, my agenda is not first in your life yet. I can't elevate you yet until you learn how to put me first. I can't put you on a pedestal until you put me in a prominent place in your life. Sometimes you've got to say, God, I'm going to learn how to decrease. Teach me how to decrease. Teach me how to stop. Teach me how to come out of my own way. Teach me how to come out of my own agenda. Teach me how to come out of my own plan. Teach me how to come out of my own thinking. Teach me how to come out of my own of, of my own mentality. Lord, teach me how to decrease so that you can provide your increase. Hallelujah. And you see, while Vashti was thinking about her throne, amen, thinking about her castle, Esther was thinking about the kingdom. Hallelujah. And while Vashti says, I'm not coming out because I'm I'm too, uh, for any reasons, amen, God was saying, I don't want nobody who doesn't think about me in the place, in the place where you were on, on, on the throne. I want people that think about me, amen, when they get to the throne, they can release the kingdom. Hallelujah. And I believe that there's a remedy that is rising that says it's not about us. There's a remnant that's rising that says it's not about my beauty. It's not about my appearance. It's not about my anointing. It's not about what people say about me. It's not even about my title. Oh, Rabbi Shikim. This is all about the, re the release of Jesus. This is all about the elevation of the kingdom. This is all about us expanding and moving into territories where God gets the glory in my life. Uh, for, for my life. This is about expanding the work of the kingdom. This is about releasing the work of the kingdom on you plane. So listen, sister, I can help you up. Listen, brother, I can help you up. Listen, family, we got to get up. This is not about me. This is about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it becomes about the kingdom, he keeps the crown. Hallelujah. When it becomes about the kingdom, he keeps the honor. When it becomes about the kingdom, amen, he keeps, hallelujah, his, his glory. Hallelujah. He keeps his sacrifice. I don't want to be about myself and have to have him go on the cross again. I don't want to put the be the one that puts Jesus on the cross again. Hallelujah. That makes him feel like he got to go again. Hallelujah. I want to be the one that when it was finished, he says, yes, I did it for you so you can continue my work. I've finished my work so you continue my work. And listen, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Lord is saying that the age of the superstar is over. And Esther arising means the age of Vashti is over, which means the end of a period is over. And God is raising up Esthers who are going to put the kingdom first. God is raising up Esthers who know about putting the agenda of the Lord first, who will know about putting the worship of the Lord first, who have the wisdom to get the Lord's agenda into political arenas, who have the wisdom to get the Lord's agenda into arenas of power. Sometimes we've got to understand that when God lifts you into prominent places, he says, do it for my people, do it for the, do it for my remnant, do it for the rest of us. Look at the Bible says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand back to you in the second woman of God. But the Bible says, consider the ants, you sluggards. Consider the ants. It says the ants. Look at that. There's a partnership in the ants. There's a harmony in the ants. There's a sacrifice in the ants. When you're really kingdom, amen, you don't care if you don't win as long as Jesus does. You don't care if it don't happen for you as long as it happens for the Lord. You don't care about your name being in lights as long as his name is lifted up. When you're really kingdom, Hallelujah. We can work together whether we're Baptists, whether we're Protestants, whether we're, we're, we're Baptists or, 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 or Pentecostals or any kind of denomination. When it's kingdom, it's about him. Hallelujah. 
And I believe there's a remnant of Esther rising up, rising up. There's a fire brand. For Esther is not just about being a female, a female vessel. It's about a vessel that's ready to take place in government. It's about a vessel that's ready to take over from wicked rule. It's about a vessel that is ready to lead and change the fortunes of a people. It's about a vessel that's saying that, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to be the that light for you, God. I'm ready to be that vessel for you, God. I'm ready to be that chosen one for you, God. Send me, God. I'll go. Lord, that vessel that says, Lord, I am ready to be that, 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 that force. I'm ready to be that one that you can trust in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, let me say one thing about Esther. She was the one God trusted. I hope you understand what I'm saying. She was the one God trusted. And when you position your vessel so that your vessel can be a, a vessel that God can trust, you will get elevated by him. Hallelujah. There's some vessels that can't be trusted. Hallelujah. There's some cups. There's some cups, like glasses of water, that you look at it and it looks all good, but somewhere there's a crack in it and it can't be trusted. When a vessel can't be trusted, it's leaking content. It's leaking, it's not doing its job. And sometimes what God has to do, he has to test the vessel to see if it can be trusted. Or Ramashikin, some of you, amen, God has not forgot about you. He's just testing you to see, can you be trusted? He's not forgotten about your call and your gift and your ministry. He's saying, can you be trusted? Can I trust you to worship me at all times? Can I trust you to praise me when you don't feel like it? Can I trust you to lift up your hands and shout hallelujah when you're going through your Job season? The Lord said to Satan, Satan, I don't think you understand about Job. You can trust Job. I can trust Job. And Satan says, if you take the hedge off him, he'll curse you to your face. And God was like, watch me. Watch me take the hedge off Job. And watch Job show you that he's a man that doesn't lead, his, he doesn't need my, my provision to give me the right performance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When God trusts a vessel, he says that vessel, no matter what happens, will always give me the glory. No matter what happens, will always be the one that I can call upon. God says, I can't trust Saul. Y'all pick Saul. You guys pick Saul. I'm picking my Davids. I'm picking that one that has my heart. I'm picking those people that have my spirit. Listen, they may not have all the degrees. They may not look like all the what you need. They may not have all the beauty or vasty. They may not look wonderful, but I trust them. Hallelujah. There's a broken and contrite heart there. There's a vessel that was willing to go through the rejection. I wasn't looking for election. There's a vessel that's willing to go through the process. There's, willing, there's a vessel that's willing to go through. Listen, some of you don't understand why God's putting you through. God is trying to prove he can trust you. God is trying to prove your worship. God is trying to prove your ministry. Listen, some of us are going through situations and we're like, God, when will it end? And God is saying, I'm proving to the devil that you ain't here today, gone tomorrow. You're a vessel that we can trust. Come on, somebody, Esther's arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to be an Esther in this season to get up and arise to the next level. Hallelujah. 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 I feel in my spirit, praise God, that some of you, amen, you've had a problem with your process. Amen. Sometimes when we don't understand the way of God, we don't understand that God works by process. Hallelujah. What do I mean by process? He has to put you in position sometimes to get your whips, put you in position sometimes to get your persecution. Persecution is a part of the promise. When you're persecuted, amen, it means that, listen, it means that there's something in you, amen, that wants to be released out of you. And sometimes the only way to release what's in you out of you is a persecution. Or Rabbi seeking. Sometimes, amen, what's stopping what's coming out of you is the opinion of man. So God has to use man to persecute you. Sometimes what's stopping what's coming out of you is the opinion of people. So God has to use people to persecute you. And sometimes when people persecute you, you realize something. I was never called for them. I was never chosen for them. I was never picked for them. Listen, I, they're not the one who selected me. They're not the one who picked me. When you get to that 
place. God says, you're nearly ready. You're nearly ready. The Bible says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, behold, I'm a child. I can't speak. And God said to Jeremiah, shut up, Jeremiah. You're not a child. You're not somebody. You're, you'll say what I told you to say. you got to be delivered and go through a process to be God's prophet. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah had to go through his season like many of us go. We're crying because men don't like us. We're crying because people don't want us. We're going through hardships because people don't accept us. You're, 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 you, you know you can preach. You know you can teach, but they ain't picking you. Do You know you got something in you. You know you got a heart for the Lord, but they ain't look, they're bypassing you. And God says, listen, I need you to see. I need to see how you react when, when the prophet Samuel comes to your house and they pick all your brothers before you. I need to, oh, Rabbi Safa, the Holy Ghost. I need to see how you react when, when your own dad forgets you're in the bush. When your own dad forgets you're with the lion. When the, when the prophet says, bring out all your sons. And you, he, you're the one that's forgotten. And you see, David didn't react. David didn't cry. David didn't moan. He just kept on caring for the sheep. He just kept on doing his role. And sometimes when God sees you're not moved by men, he says, you're ready for the palace. Oh, you're ready for the palace. Oh, some of you, God is saying, I'm perfecting you. Your process is for the palace. Oh, I'm going to give it back in a second. Let me just encourage you one more. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about Joseph. Amen. And the beginning of his dream, the beginning of his process was a pit. Hallelujah. Everything that is about to be backed by God has got to be buried first. When you're backed by God, they got to bury you first. Sometimes you don't understand the blessing in being buried, the blessing in being betrayed, the blessing in being blocked. Sometimes, amen, what you carry is not for everybody. So God's got to block your voice from giving a dream to everybody. Not everybody can receive a dream. Not everybody can receive your vision. Not everybody can understand what you're carrying. Oh, there was something in Mary not everybody understood. Not even Joseph understood that the person that was in her, his wife, was the son of God. Listen, sometimes we've got to stop explaining to everybody that who we are. Stop explaining to everybody what we are. Stop explaining to everybody what you're called to do. Listen, if you're made to do it, then do it. If you're made to make it happen, make it happen. If you're made to exceed, then exceed. If you're made to excel, then excel. You've got to stop explaining sometimes what's in you because people, when they know what's in you, they try to kill you. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And you see, the Bible says this. Huh? The Bible says that when Joseph was buried in the ground, Amen. When you bury seed, it takes root. Hallelujah. Some people look like they just appeared, but they were buried. Some people look like they just appeared, but they were hidden. Your breakthrough was underground the whole time. Your blessing was underground the whole time. Joseph was in the pit. Joseph was in a place and he looked like he was buried. But the only way for a seed to germinate is in the dark. Hallelujah. You don't get butterflies from the light. You get butterflies from the dark. Hallelujah. You get butterflies from cocoon processes. Hallelujah. And sometimes we've got to understand the spiritual process of God. That's why you never heard Joseph complain because God gave him a dream and God gave him the wisdom of the process. Hallelujah. He went from pit to Portiphus house. Hallelujah. The port of us house looks like port of us house looks like you're going through and things are getting better, but then they accuse you. It looks like things are changing for you, but then they accuse you, accuse you. God said, I had to let them accuse you at port of us house so you won't get comfortable in a place that wasn't your position. It wasn't his position forever to be able to dwell in port of us house. His position was always the palace. And sometimes we want to make home in a temporary place. That's why God said, I allow allowed Ziglag to be burnt down for David. I allowed David's wives to be taken. I allowed the people to mourn because they were trying to make home in a temporary place. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Some of you, amen, God's got more for you. That's why they had to let you go. That's why they had to accuse you. That's why they had to say, oh, man, of things against you falsely. God said, I've got more for you. I've got more for you. So I can't let you settle at Portiphus' house. Hallelujah. And from Portiphus' house, he went to the prison. 
I want to encourage somebody, amen? You see, it looks like it's getting worse in the natural, but it's getting better in the Holy Ghost. Oh, hey, it looks like it's getting worse for me, but something in me is beginning to realize who I am. Something in me is beginning to accept my calling. Something in me is beginning to accept my persecution. I feel the Holy Ghost. Something in me is realizing that, listen, that I didn't die in the pit. I didn't die in Potiphar's house. And even though I'm in the prison, even though I'm in the prison, I'm about to make it out. Oh, that's what happened to Paul and Silas. They said, even though we're in the prison, we're about to make it out. That's why they began to worship in the prison, because the devil done try and got me a long time ago and couldn't touch me. Or even though I'm here, I know there's a process, I know there's a there's a there's a there's a glory that's about to be released in my life that's about to take me to the next dimension. That's why you never heard him complain in the prison. Hallelujah. When you're in the process and you know you're in the process, you don't have time to complain. You just keep your vessel. To say, God, I know you're purging my vessel to see if you can trust me with your promise. Hallelujah. And when God sees a mindset that understands process, a mindset that understands its position, a mindset that understands its seasons. The Bible says the sons of Issachar knew the signs and the seasons with God. Even Jesus said, hypocrites, uh, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs and the seasons. Sometimes it's not about knowing what's happening to everybody. You've got to know what's happening to you. Hallelujah. You've got to know what season you're in. Hallelujah. It ain't my time yet. It ain't my time yet. Sometimes you've got to be like Jesus and say, it ain't my time yet. You think it's over for me? It ain't my time yet. You think God's forgotten about me? It ain't my time yet. You think you can touch me? It ain't my time yet. You think I can die? I cannot die because it ain't my time yet. Oh, come on. To everything, there's a time and a season. And that's why Joseph was comfortable with his time. Oh, come on, Esther's. I'm talking to some Esther's tonight. Esther had a time. What about Satan? Well, this when it's Esther's time. Everybody had to stop and start beautifying Esther. Everybody had to stop and start honoring Esther. Everybody had to stop. In fact, before Esther's time, they had to, she had to, she had to emerge herself to get herself ready for her time. When you're in a process, you're also in a preparation for your time. Some of you don't understand the skills and the, the, and the mindset needed for your time. Sometimes you've got to have ultimate patience when it's your time. You're going to have an ultimate, uh, ultimate, ultimate love when it's your time. You're going to have to deal with some real big demons when it's your time. So God says, I'm going to train you and put you through the process with the little demons, with the little anger, with the little, the little accusations. So when you get to the stage, you're ready for it when it's your time. Oh, listen, Esther was sure that she had to make sure she was prepared. She was soaked in the oils. She had the right smell. She had the right fragrance because honey, she's getting ready for her time. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. God says you're rising up, Esther's. God is getting you ready for the time. God is getting you ready for the king. God is getting you ready for the bride. Because when you get to that time, you're going to need to shine for the Lord. When you get to that time, you need to shine for the king. When you get to that time, it's a prominent place. You're next to the king. People will watch you in that time. People will look at you in that time. People need to see you and be like you and say, and then when they see you and they want to be like you, you say, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's the time. Hallelujah. God said, that's why I had to put my remnant through a process. I let everybody go first. Some of you didn't understand why everybody had to go first. Because the last has to become first. And the first must be last. We're in a changing of the gods, a season prophetically, where God has changed the gods. And God says the age of the superstar in the body of Christ is over. The remnant is rising. Esther rep represents the remnant that God had in his heart from the beginning to be queen. Hallelujah, to be queen. The remnant that has the heart of the father. The remnant that has the heart of the Lord, the remnant that have not bowed their knees to Baal, the remnant that don't preach for no money. Let me be real.
real with you, amen. The remnant, amen, that ain't in ministry because they failed at everything else. The remnant that, listen, that says, I'm here because God called me to be a voice for my people. Ah, we need some prophets that say, listen, I ain't in it for P-R-O-F-I-T. I'm in it for the Lord. I ain't in it, I ain't in it for my own agenda. I'm in it for the Lord. We need some prophets that pure from pure in heart that says, I ain't in it because what I can get. I'm in it because what I can give. I've got something to do for your people, Lord. I've got something to release for your people, Lord. The process you put me through has purged me. I'm ready to release the power and the glory to God and to him be the glory. Hallelujah. If you're an Esther in this place, I want you to praise him right now. It's your time to arise. You've been through your rough season already. You've been through your hardship already. That's why it had to happen. Because God was preparing you for the platform. God was preparing you to be queen. Sometimes you need problems to, to, in your life to show you who you are. And the platform that the Lord is releasing for you now is where God says, now you have, are out the way. I'm releasing the esters, the esters, the esters to arise in Jesus name hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus for the thank Esther Jesus. Wow. Yes, thank you Lord wow wow men of God that was powerful this is a powerful message message here now I I I, I if whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do through you, men of God, go ahead. If there's some people that the Lord allowed you to see and to speak with right now, we I'm just going to release it so that you can speak to them in the name of Jesus. Ah, my God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there's, um, let me start with a sister um, over here that's on the screen. I forgot her name. I think it's Car Carly. Carly? Yes. I see that there's going to be a branch... Of, of people coming to you for publishing, book publishing. I see that's, I don't know if you do that already, but as a major operation of, of publishing of books that's gonna come. And I see you like literally um, holding events in terms of for Christian women in business, events for Christian women in business. I don't know if you do this already, I've never met you, but I'm seeing these events, amen? And it's gonna be very prominent with books, publishing, publishing books, how you publish your books, how you promote and do social media management. And I see the Lord is going to cause you to cause people, there's a wealth transfer anointing upon your life, where it's going to cause people to, to, to not just be prominent in Christian circles, but you're going to prepare Christians for the marketplace, prosperity in the marketplace. But mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a grace on you to understand systems and understand um, workings of how things are put together. And God's going to give you the ability to begin to train people how to penetrate um, the systems of the enemy, train people how to penetrate the wisdom of 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 of, of the of the of the of the of the serpent. Hallelujah! For the Lord says, "Be as wise as the serpent." Hallelujah! But the harmless as the dove. And you will package my saints, saith the Lord. You will package my people, so they will go into Babylonian systems and they will come back and bring wealth into the kingdom. For the transfer, you God says, "I picked you as a transfer agent to begin to." train and raise my people to be to train and raise my people into systems of wealth generation and god says even this time i'm going to prepare the stages i see almost like danny johnson danny johnson like a danny where danny johnson was able to work in that realm and she'd be able to sow 90 percent of her income amen and because she was so because the money was flowing through her. And there's a grace, a financial grace, where God's going to bless you financially. God's going to open doors for you financially. There's an almost like a millionaire grace that's going to come upon you, that God's going to say, Lord, God's going to make you wealthy to make others wealthy. He's going to cause that to manifest. For your heart is to see people out of poverty. Your heart is to see them out of problems. Because God says, I put you through the process first. I put you in a problem first. I put you in a situation. And so you experience the pain of the problem so the Lord says that that's why I provoked your spirit to make you the solution but God says this is the season where I will raise you up daughter and your voice will be known to many your voice will be known to many but the Lord says I am shifting the guard for those who have my heart for those who have my heart and I am putting them into prominent circles and places get ready for circles to expand get ready for prominent doors to open get ready for prominent people to see and hear your sound hear your voice for God says elevation has come elevation Salvation has come. Acceleration has come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Men of God, if there's anyone that you see that you want for me to bring up, I told you, Carrie, that this man of God will. I told you what before he came. You wasn't here, man of God. I told her to be ready to receive a word. I told her that this morning. So praise God. If there is anyone that the Lord is is printing out that you like to bring forward, I would like to bring them forward. In the, in the Amen. Screen. Well, as as they as they comment, I'm gonna just talk. Amen. But Amen. you know, I want to honor you, woman of God. This is God's prophet. I said you in private. I'm gonna say it in public that this is you are God's prophet. You are God's mouthpiece, and God is going to use you as a spiritual surgeon to begin to uh, open up the hearts of men. And God says that this is the season where people will try to block the door, but I will open it anyway. This they will fight the door, but I will open it anyway. They will try to do whatever they want to do, but God says what I have ordained. When I have blessed, no man can curse. And the season of open door, the season of moving super in, in, in supernatural pace, pace is going to come. God's going to yoke you with people that can move at your pace. Because there's a pace coming to your ministry. There's a speed coming to your ministry. There's a grace coming over upon you to open doorways and platforms, connecting connections for men and women of God. God's going to use you to connect many great vessels, many great people to the. And God says, I'm going to use you to minister to them. But you will be a prophet to the pastors, a prophet to the pastors, a prophet and a voice of comfort to the pastors, a prophet that will speak into the lives of men and women of God, especially pastors wives pastors wives will come and they will receive guidance and they will receive instruction and the Lord says I will use your pain and give it purpose I will use your life and give it purpose I will use everything you've gone through and I will say to you, use what you have, what you have will no longer be a garment of shame but a garment of praise, it will be your token it will be your token. It will be what you use to get you through. It will be your passport. But the Lord will say, that's why the people will open their heart to you. For you're not one who says it. You're one who walked it. You're not one who's spoken about it. You're one who's you're the one that's actually been in it. And the Lord says, I will bless you. Get ready. Get ready. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's Jesus. going to happen. I see a couple of people putting messages up there. Hallelujah. The next yes. person I'm going to speak to, I see Aggie Timothy. Amen. Agi Timothy, Kababa Shuku, Lora Mama Mama Shiki, Didi. I see like literally there's almost like diamonds or stars on you, woman of God. I see that there's almost like a grace and a, and a fire. Oh, Rabashi, there's a fire over you. Kababa Soto, and there's a prophetic anointing and power that you carry. Hallelujah. And it's almost like sometimes the pearls are blinding for many. The pearls are blind, the, what God is giving, the diamonds are blinding for many. So many people can't understand the dimension of the glory that God wants you to walk in and many times it's almost like the visitations you get in the spirit are so detailed and so accurate that it's cause for things to come. God's going to have you to walk in a, ah, a prophetic anointing where you speak about things four to five years down the line. They will look at your words and they will go back and visit and they say that's what she said four or five years down the line. That's what she said all in, in, in that place. For our God has given you a level of forensic accuracy when it comes to his, when it comes to the timeline of man. God is going to allow only certain people to be positioned around you because there's a grace upon you for increase. There's a grace upon you for prosperity. Prosperity. Those who partner with you will, will receive prosperity. For the prophet's grace is to prosper. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who listen to their prophet shall listen to the prophet shall prosper. And there's a prosperity anointing upon you where people will prosper in their lives. They will prosper in their mind. They will prosper in their thinking. They will prosper in their in the in the in the in the in the, in the in their ways and the Lord says that I've made you one that will change the fortunes of others as you enter into arena the same covenant I had with Abraham whoever you bless will be blessed whoever you curse will be cursed God says I put you in a place of divine covenant where people will see people will see up divine revelation and elevation when they connect and they partner with you and I'm seeing training courses training courses I don't know if you do this training courses but I'm seeing you working in dual realms. There's a business grace and there's a ministry grace. Dual realms, training courses, but not just training courses in the prof in, in prophetic things and different things to do with ministry, but also training courses in the workplace. For God says that there's a CEO 
CEO and a grace sort of open entrepreneurial grace upon you. And I don't know you from anywhere, woman. I've never seen you, never heard from you. I just saw your name. You popped up just there. But I'm seeing that God is also going to ha ha shikaraba seeking. God is also going to deal with the matters of the heart, hidden matters of the heart. Huh? With those around you, those around you. Some about some of them, God says, I'm going to reveal their heart to you. Don't be a surprise. Love them when they manifest. Love them when they manifest because some can't handle some of the things that you're going to say and you're going to have to be saying to them. But God says, I've called you as a, a, a path, a pathway that is literally, literally singular, literally a straight, narrow path and you cannot move from it. And some will not be able to move with you because it will be so narrow to move. But the Lord said, this is what I'm doing, daughter. I'm bringing out those who are true and those who are noble to walk with you in this season. I'm bringing out those who can carry the load, carry the load. Don't go by what they say, go by what they can carry. Hallelujah. Go by what they can carry. God said to Moses, and the 70 came out, the 70 were selected to carry the load. And the Lord says, many are going to come and say, we're with you, we're with you. But the Lord said, those that can carry content can come. Those that can carry can come. Those that can carry can come because the work and the measure that God has going to cause you is going to cause you to need help and He's going to establish you and bless you more than you know. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Is there anyone else, men of God? I want to pull up as much people as possible. I know when you prophesy, you just go at it, but. <laughs> There's many yeah. others that will receive. I, I can feel this the sense of uh, the Who is this? lady, Lady Jones. I saw Lady, lady Jones. Jones. Okay, let me I find Lady, lady Jones. Jones. I'm sorry if the, the it's a bit blurry. I'm trying to get myself in the middle of the shot, so I'm not in the blur. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lady Jones. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you for the grace upon this ministry family god couple lord father uh, i see fresh garments fresh garments are being released over you right now in the spirit i see god beginning to um cause you to reinvent old things in new ways for there's a season of transformation has come the things are going to be put in its proper place for the new era and the new season that god is bringing you into and in, in a spiritual dynamic but the lord i see your labor of love over the years and the lord is pleased with your labor of love but the lord says more is required to elevate into this next season more is required to move into the promises for the lord says as satan repackages so was we repackage and there's a repackaging going on where the lord is giving you fresh revelation fresh ideas i, I see almost like the transformation of the wine skin is happening over you where the old wine skin is becoming the new wine skin and the transformation process is the soaking god says that this is the season to soak this is the season to rest this is the season to to, to believe this is the season for me to for just to come closer to me closer to me come closer to me and as the old as the wine skin changes it from old to new because of the soaking process god says that there's going to be a refreshing going to come upon your life a refreshing going to come upon your family a refreshing going to come upon you upon everything you're doing for so there's oh there's an open door there's a door that's going to be open very soon that's going to transform and lift you to the next level and just as esters are arising god says this is an esther this is an esther this is an esther karabaso to where i I will lift her. I will lift her because there's a mind that God wants you to have to inherit the new promise. There's there's a pioneer grace. There's a pioneering grace. There's a pioneering grace. There's an entrepreneurial grace that the Lord is going to put upon you to pioneer moves. You are not one that's among the number. You're one that's meant to pioneer and push new initiatives within your group and your and in, in, in your within your um community. And I see the Lord just releasing that, releasing that, releasing that pioneering grace to pioneer new moves of God. God's going to give you new technology. When I say new technology, I mean technology is how we work and how we do things. But I'm thinking about God's going to give you advanced kingdom technology. Advanced to, to, it's going to pioneer church in a different way, preserving the integrity of the old while elevating us to new levels, elevating us to new levels. And it's going to enter your spirit like we're going to do things like this now. And it's going to be unconventional, but it's going to work. Ah, hallelujah. Unconventional, but it's going to work. Hallelujah. There's going to be things that God was put into your spirit and that people will say, hmm, I don't know, but it's going to work. Hallelujah. For the Lord is going to open that favor, that grace and favor, grace and favor 
to move into new levels. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lady, Lady Jones, I pray that you are blessed with that. And uh, uh, men of God, a few more people than we've done because there's only one. I don't know what Carrie's <laughs> thinking right now. She's not supposed to be here that long. So I thank you, Carrie, for, for being here. And again, if there's anyone that the Lord is pointing out to you, men of God, we want to, uh, and, and please share and like and, and share the ministry of this man of God. Reach out to him on Facebook. Support the ministry if you can. If he has given you a word, this is the best time to uh, support the ministry and support what he has said with a seed in the name of Jesus. So go ahead, men of God. I'm going to let you now, uh, just I a see, few more people. I see my friend, my good friend, um, Apostle Rachel Mwabi and her wonderful husband. I honor, I honor you guys. Amen. They're doing a great work. Amen. I don't like to really prophesy to my friends so much, you know, but we have a significant distance that I can prophesy and it can be from the Lord because sometimes you prophesy which you know people are doing. Amen. But I haven't yeah. seen your ministry for a minute. So I just kept on seeing building blocks, woman of God. I saw building blocks, building blocks. And many people have almost looked at what you're doing and almost thought, what is going on? But you have a divine blueprint from the Lord. And I and what is being built will be glorious in the Lord's presence. It will be glorious that men will come from all around the world to come and partner with what your, you and your, your husband are doing. So I see a new fresh move of God's glory coming out of your work. And it's be a build, actually, as you're building these blocks and putting things in place, you're ushering a new level of glory that is going to hit and cause revival in, I think it's Malawi, Malawi. I think that's where you, you, you and your, you, you, where, 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 you, where you're pioneering or you've been pushing. And I see that the Spirit of the Lord is saying that, listen, if men do not see it now, they will come and walk Walk into it later, but build according to the pattern. Continue to build according to the pattern. For the pattern and the promise is is the promise is yet for an appointed time. But God says, I've given you a pattern and a blueprint. And it, I see revival hubs coming out of your belly. Revival hubs. Ooh, revival hubs where people will come and see um, different, they, they'll encounter God in a new way. I see your husband traveling to many different nations and doing these revival hubs. Revival hubs where people will come in and they will be touched by the Holy Spirit. For there's a prophetic deliverance grace that's going to not only give people revelation of their future, but set them free from their past. And God is going to give you that 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 supernatural um understanding of how this to build in this season building in this season it's an apostle and an apostle there's a mark there's a wise master building anointing that you both have amen so the lord has a plan the next 10 years the next 10 years are going to see you're going to see significant growth significant growth to what to god to the point we're going to say god i cannot believe you've taken me this far but i hear the lord say guard the doors Guard the doors, guard the windows, guard the doors, guard the windows, for the wolves will come. The wolves will come. The enemy will try to try to cause or cause conflicts and even cause divisions. But the Lord says, guard the doors, guard the windows, guard the exits, guard the house, guard the house, guard the gates, guard the gates. For many will come to understanding what God is doing and trying to sabotage and even try to attack. But God has graced you both to be able to prosper in the things that God has caused you to prosper. For God says that. They, whatever the enemy does, you will be two steps ahead of it. You will see it coming from a mile away. But the Lord says, just be vigilant, be sober and vigilant, be sober and vigilant, for I, the Lord, will build it. I, the amen. Lord, will build it. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, men of God, is I know you have prophesied a lot to the ladies. There are men in this place too. Just two more, and, and we should be done. And I really wanted to translate what you have said in, in, in French, but right now, with the oh. due times, um, 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 I'm just going to apologize to my French speakers. Je suis désolé, je voulais traduire exactement ce que le prophète vient de dire, mais maintenant il est en train de prophétiser. So, uh, peut-être uh, la prochaine fois, maybe the next time when you come back, if you uh, would like to come back on Revelation 18, so you. we can do a session like that. Uh, so, as I was saying, you prophesied a lot to the ladies. Yes, this is uh, Esther's arise, but um, I don't There's know if Ashton. anyone. It's Ashton C. Lane. Ashton, Ashton, Ashton. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Bless you, Brother Ashton. I see the Spirit of the Lord says that I have not forgotten your labor of love and your kindness. And it's almost like there's been a season of misunderstanding in some quarters with some people, where some people have not understood your heart and your and your and your works in certain manners and there's been almost like a disputes or, set, or or things that have happened but God says everything will turn around for good everything will turn around for good and I'm seeing that God <laughs> I'm seeing the faithfulness of God is upon you the faithfulness of God and God says son I will indeed finish what I have started I will indeed finish what I was started what I said about your life will come to full completion and I'm seeing something to do with contracts contracts and contracts and pro and things that God promised you even like years ago are going to come to manifest things are going to come around again you're in a season where things that you thought you'd miss are going to come back again come back around again to you you're in a season where things, people who didn't who walked away from you in the season of your weakness are going to come and try to celebrate you in the, in the season of your greatness hallelujah and the Lord says that this is the season where we Joseph's brothers came back and Joseph had to receive their brothers again in the right heart in the right manner God says receive them in the right manner for I will elevate you and I will open up doors for you to go into new territories new heights I'm seeing there's almost like um I don't know if you're into music or you do music or or you do kind of like worship or whatever you do but I'm just kind of feel like there's a graceful music music and worship on, on you and I see like you know there's a worshiper there's a worshiper there's a worshiper and uh I, and I hear the Lord saying that that is the key that's one of your keys in the spirit that's one of your weapons in the spirit that makes the devil back off when you come into a place of sincere worship and sincere praise it's a sound you release I feel the holy ghost there's a sound you release that when you worship people come into the presence and they come into the full um the full understanding of 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 god hallelujah and god says yes many are the afflictions of the righteous but i will deliver you i will deliver you i will deliver you i will make a way with a seem of being no way the season is called trust him trust him trust him for the lord says trust him i will trust me trust me trust me will i not bless you will i not honor you will i not continue the work i've done in you even though people see shortcomings god said i see you i see your heart and there's been many people putting their mouth upon you but god says their mouth can't erase my word their mouth can't erase my word and the lord said this is what i want i when i when i when i i'm going to open a great factual door like Paul said in the presence of many enemies in the presence of many enemies so God says rest in him in this season rest in him trust him believe him that he will bless you and he will open up the doorways of the Lord to be prosperous in this city i speak prosperity prosperity and i speak health over you i speak wealth over you i call a change for a change of season a change of season lord father that you will establish him and you will favor him lord in the name of jesus in jesus name amen amen ashton ling i hope i said the name right i pray that you have received this and you have write it down because the prophet the man of god has been spoken now understand that he is the verse of the lord so i pray this is the confirmation to you men of god so glory to god amen so uh, amen. is there one more person that passed <laughs> Y'all working me today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. uh, I've got to. I've got to head out in a minute because I've got to go to the ordination, ordain okay. some ministers. Yes. But, yeah. Amen. So, uh, you want the men or you want the women? <laughs> you want another man? The men's. <laughs> you want the men's? Uh, just just one more person here i don't know where they went so um lessons, ooh, lessons. lessons. yeah that carlos brown is that is apostle that? oh yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos Brown. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Thank you, Cameron Lord. Cameron here, too. Uh, and Cameron. Cameron. Okay. 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 We're done. Uh, After that. I, I started with Carlos Brown. Carlos Brown. There's a kingly anointing. There's a crown upon you, sir. There's a crown upon you. And I see, like, there's a, ha a hammer. Hammer and weapons that God has given you in the spirit to literally break 
open territories and land, break open dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And she kind of whispered apostle, but yes, God says, yes, my apostle. Yes, my my my, my chosen vessel. Yes, my, my victorious one. And the Lord said the battles are not given to the ones who don't have the tools. The battles are ones given to the ones who have the tools. And the Lord says that, like, Almost like in in there's a season, uh, the story, a cartoon called Dragon Ball Z, where they get the the Saiyans got stronger with the battles, and the Lord said that is almost like you. You get stronger with the battles. You get bigger with the battles. In fact, the enemy should is almost thinking of retiring against you because you keep on pressing and you keep on going on and you keep on getting stronger. And there's a there's a lion that is about to roar when you come forth. A lion roars, and Lord says, don't be apologetic because about your proclamations because they haven't seen your process they haven't seen it and god said don't be apologetic in any arena any platform but let the lion roar let the lion roar for the lord the roar is going to encourage the young lions to come forth the young lions